Okay, welcome everybody to the Lateral Insight Awards first ever virtual pitch fest and drinks. Uh, my name's Charlie Gunningham and I'm your MC for this event. It's going to be a very exciting late afternoon, early evening as we slide on into the weekend and as we show showcase for the first time the tech and innovation that lives here in WA from our 2019-20 entrance. I would firstly like to acknowledge WA Information Technology and Telecommunications Alliance patron, Professor Lynn Beasley, who is here with us tonight. Professor Beasley holds many honoraries, amongst them a distinguished neuroscientist, educator, honorary distinguished fellow at the Institute of Advanced Studies at University of West Australia, and WA Australian of the Year 2015. Hello, Lynn. If you know Lynn, she is there smiling. On behalf of the Inside Awards, I would also like to thank the generous sponsors and their support who make these awards possible. Uh, firstly, Lateral Australia, the naming sponsor, Space Cubed and Business News, who are tonight's special sponsors. Paul King from Media Rights, who's our awesome media operator to, for tonight and the reason everything is gonna go swimmingly. NEC, ICT Group, Kinetic IT, Ninja Software, the Office of Digital Government, State of West Australia, MODIS, ACS, that's the Australian Computer Society, WA, Curtin University, University of West Australia, Edith Cowan University, ABA Agency, Core Innovation Hub, Royal Flying Doctor Services, WA. They're all our sponsors. Thank you very much. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, it really means a great deal. Uh, now we're going to kick off proceedings with a word from the Honourable Dave Kelly, as we know, always appears at these events. Uh, he's a great supporter of these awards in this program, the Minister for Science and Innovation, and he's going to say a few words. Over to you, the Honourable Dave Kelly. Good afternoon and welcome uh, to this pitch fest. Um, I want to begin by uh, welcoming everybody uh, around Australia for being part of uh, this event. It's the first time we've been doing it as a virtual uh, event. Obviously, the uh, coronavirus has thrown up uh, many challenges. I want to thank uh, all the team at WAITA for uh, rising to the challenge and making sure that we can uh, deliver this event uh, again for this year. I want to begin by uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. Uh, around Australia, we acknowledge the traditional owners, their elders past and present. The McGowan government is very proud to support this year's uh, 2020 uh, Lateral Insight Awards Pitch Fest. This is a very important event in the Western Australia sort of landscape for innovation uh, and uh, the ICT industry generally. Now more than ever, uh, we need our innovators to be standing up tackling real life problems uh, and helping us drive our economy uh, forward. Uh, in the past, uh, this event has really been a launching pad for some really great projects. It's not just a certificate, it really has been a boost uh, for those innovators. Just last year, uh, the Noisy Guts uh, project uh, won a million dollars uh, in investment from the Biomedical Translation Bridge Program uh, to really boost their AI uh, for their uh, acoustic belt, which is really going to help uh, real life patients with a real life medical problem. So uh, look, again, uh, thank you to everybody involved in putting this program together. Good luck to all the participants. Uh, you've done uh, great things by getting this far. Uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, event in particular but I hope you uh, enjoy the program uh, overall. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the day. Well, thank you very much, Minister. And yes, we will definitely enjoy tonight. Uh, not yet, but I've got a nice little bottle of red wine just over there, which I'll probably be tipping into uh, over the next couple of hours. All right, now, and I hope you're doing the same at home, wherever you are. You're staying well, you're staying safe. Uh, and thanks for coming and joining with us this evening. Now, a word from a very important person. Tommy Shin 
uh, is our diamond and naming rights sponsor. A lot of us know Tommy in the startup tech community here in Perth and WA. Tommy Shin, of course, is from Lateral. Uh, and now I'd like to throw over to Tommy. He's going to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this year's Virtual Pitch Fest. My name is Tommy Shin from Lateral, and we are the naming sponsors for Lateral Inside Awards. I've seen a lot of Pitch Fest in my life, and this is probably the first time I've actually attended one virtually. Today's COVID-19 pandemic has left uncertainty in a lot of companies' future positions. This has also shown that a lot of companies need to be digitally ready, and that future-proofing our businesses is now important more than ever. It is crucial that WA's tech and startup scene continues to be nurtured, supported, and let them grow. We hope that the Lateral Inside Awards will not only be a confidence boost to our local tech scene, but a sign for others to support WA innovation and also step up with the commitments to companies in WA. As you know, the theme of this year's conference is 2020 Vision. Now, to have a great 2020 vision, we need to see what's clearly not just in front of us, but what's all around us. Thank you for attending this year's Pitch Fest and please stay safe and good luck to all the entrants. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tommy. Great. Um, so let's get these pitches started. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. We're going to showcase 11 pitches today with our judges, Greg Reby, the lead judge from Entrepreneurs in Res Residence, Mark Pownell from Business News, and Callie Norman from Space Cube providing alternative feedback after each pitch. So there'll be one taking each in turn. Um, we also have some prizes tonight for the best pitch and also for the People's Choice Awards. And that's where you come in. So make sure you use the polls on the right-hand side panel to vote for your favorite pitch tonight, but at the end of the pitches. So wait until the end, until we've had the all 11 and then choose the one that you think is best for you. Uh, and uh, we'll tell you when the polls are open and then you can jump in there and vote for your favorite. And there'll be a prize for that one as well as the one that the judges think is the best pitch, which may be the same or it may be different. If you need assistance tonight, please go to the chat function. There's a chat icon on the bottom of this page on the right hand side and the Insight Award team members will be on hand to help with any questions you have. If you have any questions for our pitchers from tonight, uh, we, I will be chatting with them. Uh, so if you want to add those, you can do in the Slido Q&A there on the side. And I will endeavor to check them and see if I can ask them to our pitches as well. The polls will be turned on after we've heard all the pitches, so you can vote for them. I'll let you know when you can start voting. There's also going to be an audience spot prizes tonight, so look out for that. Um, there will be a $200, $200 Amazon gift door prize during our panel and virtual drink section for the person who asks the most interesting or best question uh, as judged by the Inside Awards. So hang around for that at the end, okay? And if you're tweeting tonight or on Instagram or all the wonderful socials, remember to tag it with the hashtag Insight Awards, I-N-C-I-T-E Awards, hashtag Insight Awards. Now, we're going to get started with the first uh, pitch. Are you ready, everybody? And I know you're on moot, so you can't say anything, but I'm going to assume you are. And I'm also going to assume that we have our first pitch, which is Dior Everton from Curtin University, who last summer developed a 3D reconstruction of a patient's abnormal viscera and produced a hologram, a stereoscopic video, and a 3D model for medical analysis. Wow. So um, I'm going to have a quick chat with uh, Dior. Dior, are you there? Hi. Yep, I am. How are you today? How are you this afternoon? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thanks. Now, forgive my ignorance. What is an abnormal viscera? And should you have a normal viscera? <laughs> um, so the patient has a condition called situs ambiguous. So essentially the organs from their abdominal and thoracic cavities are not shaped how they should be. They're all twisted and in the wrong places. So Right. And you created a 3D reconstruction of this and a hologram. Yes. Yep. To solve the problem. Yep. 
Fantastic. Uh, how hard was it to do that? <laughs> um, very, very time consuming. Um, it took a lot of patience. Um, yeah, it was, I was learning a lot of new things. <laughs> right. And, and over what period of time have you been developing this? That was a 10 week internship that I did it in. Right. And which category are you in, in the inside awards? Which category? Yeah. Um, that you've put in for. No, oh, you don't know. Don't remember. No. Okay. <laughs> a medical one, I presume. Yeah. And, 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 and are you very well versed in pitching? Have you done a lot of pitching before or is this like the first time? No, this is the first one. First time. <laughs> awesome. So how do you think it went? Don't know. Hopefully okay. well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out. And then afterwards, we're going to hear from our lead judge, Greg Reeby, for some feedback. OK, and then we'll I'll yeah. tick tack back with you at the end. And I, I'm sure it's excruciating for everyone to watch themselves pitch, but... <laughs> We're about to do that. Okay, so All let's right. see your pitch, Dior. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dior. With an internship at Curtin's visualization facility, The Hive, I developed a 3D reconstruction for a patient with situs ambiguous, a condition characterized by the abnormal development of their cardiothoracic organs. Consequences for our, for our patient include bowel obstruction, which in turn causes chronic pain. A thorough understanding of the abnormal anatomy is necessary in order to develop pain mitigation methods. This has been hard to achieve as CT scans and MRIs do limit the interpretation and other avenues, including a colonoscopy, are too risky with the abnormal anatomy. My 3D reconstruction was developed as an alternative method of achieving this necessary understanding. With the current state of the world, the data has not yet been presented to the patient's healthcare team. However, it has been presented to the patient and their family alongside my supervisor. Together, they were able to isolate the likely origins of the chronic pain, which enabled them to manage the debilitating symptoms for the patient better, therefore improving their quality of life. Thank you. Fantastic. Well done, Dior. Very, very clear and uh, totally understood what that was all about. And we're going to go over to Greg Reby now. For a bit of feedback, our lead judge, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, thanks, Charlie. Um, actually, deal well done. If that's your first pitch, you've done very, very well. Um, I think the thing to me was actually, it's quite an amazing initiative what you're doing. It's clearly just still at the research stage. So, in fact, for me, your pitch sort of got me intrigued as to how you're actually going to translate that into the real world. Um, I, I thought the thing that actually was quite memorable to me was the uh, the fact that CT scans and MRI is actually quite limited in this sort of area. Um, so that actually, I want to find out more why that's the case, given how pervasive they are out in, you know, at, at an industry. Um, I, I think some of the, um, I, I'd probably like a little bit more on the validation, but you, it's early, res, early research. So probably taking that a little bit further. Um, and from a pitch, it'd be good to actually understand what you think the next step is. Um, so all in all, actually, well done for what you did. And, and I'd be keen to find out more. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, keen to find, find out more. I suppose that's really the object of a one minute pitch is to get them wanting more. So Dior, what do you think about that feedback? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it felt very positive. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> well done. It's always tough to go first, but it's over. <laughs> well done, Dior. So that was Dior, uh, Dior Etherton from Curtin University. Uh, now we're going to move swiftly on. Um, no, we're not. First, yes, Tommy Shin is going to make an appearance, but this time as an emoji. After each a pitch, we have a Tommy Shin emoji. So our diamond sponsor is going to give some feedback. So let's see what happens. There he is, stars in his eyes. So that, I think, is probably good. <laughs> well done, do your stars. And, well, Tommy loved it. All right, fantastic. Moving on now to uh, number two. And um, according to my show notes, we are bang on time, which is fantastic. Let's see if I can keep everything on time. Uh, but we've even got we've been a minute or so ahead. Next up is someone well known to the uh, startup and tech community in WA, Tyler Spooner from Uno Group. Tyler's a tech entrepreneur with a passion for giving back to the local community. He founded the Uno Group and Co, which is now foremost provider of market intelligence to some of the biggest retailers and brands in Australia. Good evening, Tyler, wherever you are. Hi, Charlie. Hey, where are you? Where, where are you pinging in from? Uh, just at home, the connection's pretty bad. Where's so home? If I cut out, I do apologize. Uh, just Northbridge. Northbridge. 
just Northbridge. Northbridge is lovely. Okay. Northbridge, although Northbridge would be pretty quiet at the moment with uh, all the bars and restaurants yes. shutting down. How, how are you holding really up in the COVID-19? you as busy as ever or? Yeah, it's an interesting time for the industry. So as there's uncertainty, as people want faster, quicker data, I guess. Yeah. Uh, one way to put it, we play very heavily in the FMCG space and the main retailers call it Christmas and they prepare for Christmas month in advance, but it's just been flat out for them. So logistics is getting hard and just filling the shelves has been really challenging. So I read that recently, actually, uh, I think on Business News, uh, Mark Pan will be pleased to hear that retail is actually doing quite well and fast moving consumer goods. I mean, you'd see a lot of the data as well. Yep. Uh, there's been an uplift in that area in the last few months. Yeah, it's been crazy just the volume for certain retailers. So if you haven't been adversely affected by the pandemic. If, any, if anything, you've got busier. Yeah, busy. it's still hard to get things over the line, I guess, because we deal with a lot of B2B contracts and people are scared of spending at the moment. They're kind of like, can you help us out? We're just flat out trying to fill shelf right now. And I know you're a very expert and well experienced pitcher, but have you done a virtual pitch like this before? No, this was different. This was um, a bit different. A minute pitch to a camera was a bit different for me. Right. Okay. How do you think it went? Uh, we'll wait and see. It was different. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at Tyler's pitch. And after that, Mark Pownall from Business News will give us some feedback. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyler. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Una Group. And we believe in ethnically sourced data powered by artificial intelligence. So as everyone knows, data is the new oil, right? It's one of the most expensive resources and powerful resources in the world today. Millions of dollars are spent every year by companies trying to understand consumer behavior. You've got your rewards cards, your loyalty cards, your frequent flyers. But the problem is it creates data isolation. You can only know what happens with people inside Coles or Woolworths, not across the store, leaving heaps of gaps in the market. So how we solve that is we take these here, receipts, things that people throw away, and then we get the consumers to upload them by a mobile app. We've had over 1.5 million receipts uploaded to date, and we extract information from those receipts and then provide insights to market research companies. We have partners with the biggest market research companies in the world, like Nielsen and NPD, and we are growing very aggressively. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay, thanks. Well done, Tyler. Over now to Mark Pownall from Business News to provide some feedback on the pitch. Over to you, Mark. Oh, you need to unmute your microphone. Thanks, Charlie. Great pitch, Tyler. <laughs> um, new oil is uh, is a great a great line, actually. I think. Um, and look, I, when I listened to this, I thought consumer behaviour on the internet is really well known and you know, some online giants that are, are dominating the world now that have been created on the back of it. But I do get it that um, behaviour in the physical world is, is a lot harder to understand. Um, and uh, what you're doing there is trying to provide some insight into that world, which I think is uh, very impressive. Um, I'd like to hear more about what competition is out there uh, in the market, because I imagine there's probably plenty of other tech companies trying to chase it. And I'd also like to hear more about the experience that you've got behind you to achieve this because it's a, a pretty competitive world. Great. Thanks, Mark. Do you want to respond? This isn't part of the marking. Don't worry, the pitch is done. But Tyler, do you want to respond to a couple of things that Mark said there? Yeah, sure. Mark, you're um, dead on with the uh, blind spots in physical stores. It's a huge blind spot. Um, what I'd say is, there's a lot of people chasing this. So one of the keys to what we do is we've been able to do it really cost efficiently. So the way we use computer vision and artificial intelligence actually reduces the manual input in extracting the data off the receipt. So that's been our big kind of leverage point in Australia. So they use it very heavily in the US and the UK, but there's a lot of manual touch to the process. So we bring a new way of doing it um, automatically. That's why we can do it in a small market like Australia. If that helps answer your um, question. Yeah, great. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. Good luck tonight and uh, in the future. All right, on to pitch number three. We're whipping through them. And so far, I hope you're very impressed. The technology is working beautifully, but I probably shouldn't have said that because that's going to um, lead to all sorts of problems in the future. And it'll all be my fault for having said how well it's going, but it's going very well. So the guys, uh, Paul and everyone, Kiri in the back uh, room, you're doing really well, doing wonders. Okay, pitch number three is Billy Sung also from Curtin University, as Dior is. And Billy has created Visitor Estimate. No, I've forgotten. I knew something would go wrong. We've got to have the Tommy Chin emoji, haven't we? Sorry, I forgot that. So 
Tommy Chin emoji time on the Tyler pitch. All right, thumbs up. Thank you. And thank you, Jason Waller, for reminding me. I've forgotten the, I've forgotten the emoji. All right, now we're going to get to Billy Song from Curtin University. He's created the visitor estimation through passive wireless tracking analytics, which provides an automatic estimation of visitors for government councils uh, like the city of Stirling to make informed decisions on city planning, place marketing, and tourism strategies. So hopefully Billy is there. A quick yeah, chat with Billy. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? And um, also, um, this innovation, I must correct, um, uh, that it is actually created by my um, summer internship uh, intern who is in a Cisco summer internship, um, Jocelyn Ma. Right. Give them a shout out. Well done, Jocelyn. Um, and so presumably you're working with the city of Stirling. Is that right? That's why you, they got mentioned. Mm. A few, a few um, cities, so mainly city of Fremantle, um, but a few cities have um, uh, did uh, express interest that they are interested in some type of uh, technology that's similar to this. Right. And where did the idea come from, Billy? Um, the idea really came from um, the intern um, and also Cisco because uh, we actually have a, a joint collaboration um, with Cisco at Curtin University and this is a technology that they wanted to develop a little bit further. Um, so uh, we had a uh, basically a more um, application based kind of internship where um, the intern uh, spent about um, 12 weeks with us and um, using um, basically uh, more so um, uh, machine learning algorithm to actually understand um, these uh, wireless signals and actually categorize them into different visitor types. Okay, great. Um, and has the COVID pandemic interfered with the rollout of your technology? Because presumably there's less people visiting cities, they're staying at home. So is everything on pause for now or are you using the technology to show the slowdown mm. and um, track the way it's going to go up again? Yes, I think both. Um, so what we did was we actually deployed it, um, some of these um, in uh, six locations in the city of Fremantle for a trial. And um, we actually was able to d demonstrate the effect of COVID-19 and the easing um, of basically people going out. Um, but also, uh, unfortunately, um, by March, uh, most of these businesses where we put the wireless modem on um, are basically closing. And so um, they pretty much just switched the modem off. So now we don't have any data. Um, oh, no. we are, we are not able <laughs> Able to go back and get the modems. <laughs> okay, but the tech is there, it's been developed and it's been used in the field. Let's have a look at your pitch, Billy. Thank you. Working together with councils and tourism operators, we know that visitation numbers are key metrics that inform city planning, place marketing, tourism strategies, and much more. However, existing solutions are limited. Hand tally counters may be inaccurate due to human error. Infrared counters may double count an individual if they walk back and forth. Estimation by historical data are limited due to data inconsistencies and missing data. Therefore, we leverage on Cisco Meraki technology, which allows us to develop a solution whereby wireless modem can passively pin smart devices with wireless and Bluetooth capabilities. This can occur without the smart device being connected to the modem at all. This means that we can record the presence of these smart devices and their dwell time as people walk around the vicinities. By identifying the unique MAC address, we also offer added advantage, whereby we can avoid double counting and we can even look at the visitation behavior of specific devices, such as the number of revisit and weekly and monthly visitation frequency to derive metrics such as loyalty. All right. Thanks for that. Well done, Billy. Now I'm going to head to Kali from SpaceCute, our third judge this evening, um, and she's going to provide you some feedback. Over to you, Kali. Thanks so much, Charlie, and thank you so much, Billy. That was really fantastic to watch as well. I really enjoyed that it was a, a well thought out solution um, and you clarified a really clear real world application and why you've overcome some issues with existing technology. And I think it's really great to be able to say that you're working with companies like Cisco as well. It speaks volumes for what you're working on. Um, the one thing I probably would have liked to see as a part of that pitch, but we did cover it off in the interview before, was a little bit more of a discussion around the testing. Um, things like you mentioned, City of Stirling, City of Fremantle would have been great to see in the pitch time. But, and then again, next stages. But again, it's such a minor, minor negative and what was a fantastic pitch. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. What do you think of that feedback, Billy? 
Thank you very much. Um, and I think it's very useful. And uh, to answer some of those questions also, um, obviously uh, there's a Cisco intern um, who actually developed this. So what we are hoping to do is um, work uh, alongside Cisco and actually further develop this technology whereby um, we could start um, categorizing um, different behavior uh, and their visitor type. So looking at whether they visit um, particular um, location in particular time or particular um, patterns of um, behavior and actually infer um, basically where, um, uh, who are they. Um, so are they a tourist? Are they a, um, a, a metropolitan visitor? So on and so forth. Great. Thanks, Billy. And thanks, Kelly. Okay, now the Tommy Shin emoji. Let's, which one's going to come up this time? We've had stars in the eyes, we've had thumbs in the air. And a big smile. Okay, so he's pretty happy. Tommy Shin is pretty happy with these pitches so far. So let's get um, on with it. Um, we've started off with a bang, three amazing tech innovations. Of course, we wouldn't be here without the generous support of our sponsors, including Business News, a company I know very well, of course. And as Lateral Inside Awards exclusive media partner, Business News provides news, data, and events that connect you to business opportunities in Western Australia. There's also a podcast, which you must get into, called Mark My Words. Listen to that every Friday. And if you haven't subscribed or registered, go do so, businessnews.com.au. And of course, Mark is here tonight. Thanks, Business News. Thanks, Mark, for your support. All right, let's get back to it. Um, we welcome Craig Power from Isolate. That's I-S-O-L-8, but pronounced Isolate. Hello. Uh, who has patented paperless digital lockout, tagout energy isolation system called Isolate, which uses smart field mobile devices and electronic identification of plant isolation devices using NFC tags. Craig, are you there? I am, can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Now you're out up somewhere, are you in the Swan Valley or where are you? You're in the, uh, yeah, in the Swan Valley, in the vines. In the vines, right, very nice. Are people going back to the golf course these days? Can you see, from, uh, I think you're right uh, on one of the- I'm, uh, the... I'm, I'm one street away and I one don't like golf balls in my, in my backyard, so we're quite happy. Have you had kangaroos hopping around? Apparently they've taken over the golf course. Oh, the king! We have a uh, we have a family of kangaroos that come here regularly and try to eat Pam's roses, and so they're <laughs> unpopular. But I'm quite happy. But they eat uh, the roses. We have, <laughs> have a number of other animals go through as well. Thank you. Now you've been an engineer for quite a while. I won't tell anyone your age. Uh, I think you also won Engineer of the Year a couple of years ago. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And recently, you've had some good news with a Nera grant. Yes, uh, it was released this morning. Uh, uh, Nero were putting out a, uh, a COVID-19 um, uh, tech sort of awards and uh, $200,000 to Australian companies. And there were 10 companies across Australia. And uh, yeah, so we, we were selected to uh, we yeah, just be given 20000 to develop a, a COVID-19 app. That's controversial. Um, but uh, we are now going to develop that from a repurposed app we had about uh, 18 months ago. And I think that's radius, isn't it? Yes, it was Radius. It's now, it's now got a lovely name called Isolator. Aha. Uh -huh. And of those, I, I read the press release, of the 10 grants, I think five were from WA. Well, isn't it great to hear that we're pushing uh, way above our weight? And I'm very happy that uh, we're West Aussies and we're really showing the Eastern States uh, how to do it. Fantastic. All right, let's watch your pitch for Isolate. 167 lives were lost in the Piper Alpha explosion due to an operator failing to identify and close off the right valve. Human beings uh, misread labels on uh, every now and again, and this is a problem across the globe. Isolate is a digital uh, tap and go uh, lockout tag out isolation system where we apply uh, electronic tags to, to isolation devices where we verify and we advise the operator if they've made a mistake. Our competitors use a paper-based uh, system and they do not have an end-to-end -end isolation system like this. Isolate is patented, it's paperless, it reduces administration time and more importantly, saves lives. I'm Craig Power, the Managing Director of Isolate Proprietary Limited. Give me a call and protect your people. 
Very good. And a nice call to action at the end there. All right, I'm going to go back to Greg Reby. What did you think of uh, that pitch uh, from Craig Power, Greg? Uh, thank you. Well done, Craig. Um, uh, I, I actually, I, I still get quite um, uh, intrigued or, you know, the memorable bit for me was that Piper Alpha. You know, that's such a huge thing. And I think a good part of a pitch is to actually leave you with something that people will think about afterwards. And I think that Piper Alpha one is sort of sticks in your mind because they're big numbers and big impact. Um, uh, you're clearly passionate about what you do. I, I, I get that. What, would, what I'd probably like to see a bit more is that actually where you're actually applying Isolate at the moment and the impact that it's, uh, you're actually having and, and using that as another way to um, communicate your passion about what's actually in the, the impact that's actually achieving. Um, I, I'd take with... Uh, Charlie, well, it was, it was actually really good that you had a call to action. I start. I now know what you want me to do. Uh, your pitch to me is to actually call you if I see that I've got a relevance in what you're you're solving. So, um, well done. Good on you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, final word from you, Craig. Yes, thanks for that. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, of course, the skin in the game isn't talked about there, but it happened in 1998 at, uh, at Olympic Dam. I nearly lost three people because mm -hmm. of errors. So uh, that's driven the whole process. Um, and uh, certainly the, uh, the trial that we've done and the application of it wasn't talked about there, but uh, there's, some, there's a story there to be told about how it was done and what it, what it achieved. So thank you for the feedback. It's tough to do Thanks, in one Craig. minute, I know that, but uh, yeah. Thanks, Craig. And all the best with Radius uh, and uh, what you're developing there. All right, Tommy Shin emoji time. Oh, stars in his eyes, fantastic. Are these just going to be recycled? In the, anyway, we'll see. All right, moving on now to uh, the pitch number five. And Jason Waller from IntelliCare, who will be pitching to us on their smart home monitoring, which uses AI to support seniors and people with disabilities to live safely and confidently in their home. Jason, I think you're there somewhere. Hi, Charlie. How are you? I'm very good. Now, of course, you're very well known in the tech scene. You were CEO of Spookfish. ASX listed company, which had a very nice exit uh, a while ago. Um, and you've been a fighter pilot in your past? Uh, that's correct. Uh, not a fighter pilot, I've trained fighter pilots. So I was actually trained fighter pilots. Right. I was an Orion driver, so I hunted submarines and ships uh, for a living for a while. So there. you're used to making quick decisions on the fly? Yes, learning what you can control and what you can't control. Um, there's certain things we can't control today and, and you've just got to let that be and do what you can do with um, the levers you have in front of you. And I, and I think you, are you are about to do an ASX listing with IntelliCare or, you're, or you've That's closed correct. that? Or? Yeah, we've just raised five and a half million dollars. We'll be listing in a couple of weeks. Um, so I've had my fair share of uh, over 100, I think, now investor pitches. So it's good to do something slightly different angle to it. Fantastic. And do you know what your ASX code is going to be yet? Uh, yes, ICR, I care. Very good, ICR, excellent. Well, good luck with that process. I know it's a lot of work goes into that. Um, and uh, have you done a virtual pitch like this before? Is this new to you? No, that's, I think this, everything's new to everyone at the moment, Charlie. Right. And, and uh, it's sort of cramming what would normally be a 15 minute, half an hour pitch into, into one minute was a, was a fair old challenge. All right, let's have a look. I'm Jason Waller, CEO and Managing Director of IntelliCare. After 22 years as a pilot in the Air Force, I've managed many technology projects and companies. I think IntelliCare is the most exciting yet. IntelliCare turns any home into a smart home to help the elderly and people with disability live independently. Following installation of passive sensors in the home, the system loads data to our Internet of Things platform. IntelliCare then runs this data through an AI engine and learns normal domestic routines. Our AI informs family members and carers whether the occupant is up and about each day, are they eating regularly, are they socially isolated, or are changes to sleeping habits and early sign of risks like dementia. Our app then sends out alerts when something is out of the ordinary. So if you have an elderly parent living at home, you get peace of mind and they avoid hospitalisation or going into aged care. People's strong preference is to age in their own home COVID-19 has reinforced this preference and the benefits of telehealth solutions like IntelliCare. Fantastic, obviously a huge area 
uh, Jason. Um, and um, I'm now going to pass over to Mark Pownall for his thoughts as a judge on that pitch. Mark. Thanks, Charlie. Um, a great presentation, Jason, and uh, your pitching experience certainly shows. Um, I think this is definitely an idea of its time, um, marrying technology with an increasingly aging and isolated population. And that's even before this pandemic that we're experiencing. Um, I've got aging parents who still live at home. So I, I can actually increasingly imagine the need for, uh, for this and, and for my generation anyway, who have to take that sort of responsibility. Um, so to me, the pitch was clear and I knew what the product was. Um, I thought there were a few things. How do you get past uh, old people, older, pe elder, elder people and their need for privacy? They're even more onto that than, uh, than other generations. Um, and I would have liked to hear more about how this has performed in either trials or, you know, um, how easily it connects to a variety of equipment that you have in, in the home, how user friendly it is. Uh, Cause I think there's a lot of lack of tech savviness out there. And also, uh, I guess, finally, I would like to hear how things are in terms of commercialization. So that's a lot to get into one at pitch, but you've got yeah. the right of reply, Jason. If you can, just a few words, if you can. No, he's, he's absolutely right. It's the bit that's missing from the pitch is that we're post at revenue. We're out of the R&D phase and we've got over 250 units in the field now. If you were watching Channel 9 last night, um, there was the unfortunate story of a lady who'd spent four days on the floor after she fell um, she's found by her COVID-19 carers. Um, so there's definitely a market there and I, uh, I'm happy to talk, you know, at length about, about that as well. But essentially home care service organisations are where we're at and we've, we've been selling deeply into those. Great. Thanks, Jason. All the best with the listing. Uh, and I no doubt Mark Pownall and Business News will be following that with great intent over the next Thanks. few weeks. Um, and what did Tommy Shin think of this? Uh, Tommy Shin emoji time. All right, thumbs up. Are these in the same order? I'm thinking they are. Anyway, <laughs> they're just a bit of fun thrown in. Uh, next up is Nyan Walker from Breathe To Go. Breathe To Go is a combination product made up of a smart asthma spacer and a companion mobile application targeted towards young children and children with special needs. So Nyan, are you there? Hi, I'm Charlie. How are you going? How are you going? I'm good, thank you. Are you uh, managing to keep everything going during this weird lockdown time? Um, it's a bit hard for us because we're homeschooling um, kids at the moment. So it's uh, an extremely busy time. And um, where did this idea come from? What got you started with this? Did, did, did one of your kids have asthma or? Yes, our kids um, were diagnosed with asthma about 10 years ago. And we just seen the struggle that we went through when we went to the hospitals um, to, you know, be diagnosed and the tests we had to go through and how traumatic I suppose it was because they were babies at the time. And yep. um, now that they've grown up and we have um, friends and family in the community with young kids with asthma, it sort of, uh, I suppose, re-sparked the idea to, to try and do something about it. Okay, great. Uh, let's have a look at your pitch. Jason Waller and Breathe to go. My name's Nyan from Breathe to Go. You know how young children and children with special needs struggle to sit still while having their asthma medication, making it hard for the adult to know if they've administered the correct dosage? Well, what we've done is provide them with an interactive mobile application and companion smart asthma spacer that reduces the child's anxiety while being entertained, ensuring their asthma medication is administered correctly. In fact, during our product testing, all of our participants reacted positively to their asthma medication administration with their parents commenting that it was great to see their children's anxiety reduced whilst using the device. Fantastic. Sorry, and I think I called you Jason Waller at the beginning. Sorry, Nine. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm looking at notes and going up and down, getting the names wrong. Yeah. Uh, it was all going so swimmingly, but that wasn't a technical problem. <laughs> okay, over to Kelly uh, and your comments, please, on Nyan's presentation. Thanks so much. Um, and thank you, Nayan, for your pitch. That's a really great product. And I haven't seen anything like that on a market. So it's really nice to see actually that someone's developing it. I think what I really like about your pitch and your business in general is that it's very relatable. I think uh, any parent with a child that has 
any kind of medical concern. It's such a stressful time. Um, I can really clearly see how an application such as yours would add value as well to people in that situation. Um, one thing I probably would have liked to have seen is because it is a physical product, it would have been great just to see that, um, whether that be you can show us the spacer, um, a visual of just the screen of the app or something like that. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and I appreciate that a minute is a really short time. So something like that um, is just so helpful to somebody in a position like myself who is trying to absorb everything new. But other than that, I think you really nailed it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, being my first pitch, it was sort of uh, hard to know, you know, what was needed and, and where to go. So I'll take that feedback. Good effort for the first pitch. Brave to do it as well in a public environment. Thanks, Callie, for your comments. And uh, Tommy Shin, what did you think? All right. These are definitely coming out in the same order. <laughs> there he is, smiling away. Uh, right. Now, we are just over halfway. We've had six pitches. They're pretty quick coming at you. We've got five more to go. Uh, so I um, hope you're getting inspired by that. Remember that you'll be able to vote for your favorite pitch at the end. Um, today, Space Cubed are going to be sponsoring a prize for the People's Choice Awards. Uh, we all know Space Cubed, been around for about eight years, uh, various co working spaces, uh, driving the community in the tech startup space in West Australia, um, and lots of events and support available through their programs like Plus Eight, et cetera. They are offering two, three months full time co working membership valued at $3,300. Thank you, Space Cube. All right, next pitch Nathan Clifford from Terra Vision with PASA, which stands for Comms Availability Spatial Analysis, uh, helping mobile network operators and consumers alike better understand the performance metrics of any mobile network or communications infrastructure platform. So Nathan, are you there? I am, Charlie. How are you? Uh, very nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. What's it like waiting to see yourself pitch? Bit weird, isn't it? It is incredibly weird. And I don't know if I'm the only one feeling this, but uh, it's incredibly nerve wracking, just staring at the all screen, are. constantly yeah. waiting for your time to go. Uh, and this is, this is the first for us. We've pitched to clients, but we've never pitched uh, in a public space like this. So very good. Then, uh, just vote with it. Go I mean, with slow it. internet is so annoying. Is this where the idea came from? Uh, it is. Yeah, look, we've been uh, in the space of uh, asset mobile tracking for a number of years, and we're always reliant upon mobile communication platforms uh, for our, uh, our tracking systems. And the reliance on that uh, made us realize that there is a hole in the market for, uh, for good communication network analysis tooling. And so we developed CASA. Uh, as a system that not only analyzes a network, but in real time gives a spatial analysis for visual understanding of how well the network is actually performing. Uh, right. So it's something we're incredibly excited about. The moment has come, Nathan. We're going to watch your pitch. Thanks, Charlie. Hi, I'm Nathan Clifford, Director of TerraVision. Have you ever found yourself frustrated when you want to use your mobile phone only to find that it's showing zero bars of signal? when you want to use your data only to find that it is running painfully slow. Well, me too, and the rest of society shares our pain. With such critical reliance on our mobile data networks, our mobile providers need to know exactly how well their network is performing, not just at the tower, but at your device on the ground. To solve this problem, Terravision developed CASA. It's an analytical software platform, finally giving mobile providers the vision that they need. CASA takes real signal metric data from devices. It overlays it on topographical maps to create accurate heat maps of real network coverage in real time. With the rollout of public networks in regional Australia and the rise of private networks in both mining and industry, the need for public safety and accountability has never been so great. You know, I've always been a big believer that information leads to transformation. And with CASA in the hands of our mobile operators, it's never been safer, easier, or more affordable to stop relying on theoretical models and start using actual data from their networks. With CASA, we like to think we're embracing change for the better. 
Thank you. Very slick pitch indeed. Okay, well done, Nathan. Over to you, Greg, for your comments. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, thanks, Nathan. Um, I actually, I, I really, that's, uh, I'm one of those that does share that pain that you talked about. I think I'm sitting somewhere in the middle of two um, tower coverages and I'm right there where it's not happening. Um, anything that, I think the memorable thing I got out of that was anything that actually can help my service provider to actually understand the pain that I'm um, experiencing and actually has an opportunity to be proactive to me, um, I, I really would love to have. Um, and so that's the memorable thing I took out of that because it, it really did relate to me. Um, I, I think the other part that um, uh, I would like to have seen a little bit more in terms of just how it's actually being applied at the moment and, um, and, and some of the case studies of the examples, even if it's in trial, where you've actually got and, and what that's impact's been on either a consumer or the service provider customers. Um, but outside of that, um, well done. Thank you. Great. What do you think of the feedback, Nathan? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you much, uh, very much, Greg. I, I really appreciate it. Um, we have been fortunate enough uh, to develop the system uh, beyond a beta phase and release it within a private LTE network uh, on a mine site in Western Australia. Uh, and it's been adopted by a, uh, a private mobile communications provider as well. So we're excited about that avenue. I would have loved to have brought all that into the pitch, but I, I think like everyone else, 60 seconds uh, doesn't leave you a lot of space to say everything you want. So uh, I look, I, I absolutely take it on board and thank you very much for the feedback. Thanks Nathan, Thanks. good luck, good luck with it. All right, Tommy Shin, what do you reckon? Tommy Shin emoji time. Ah, stars in the eyes. That's interesting. Okay, good. Well done. And we're moving on to the seventh pitch now. Tony from Kinetic IT. We'll be talking about Protect Plus, the next phase of cybersecurity innovation to deliver contemporary security tech, human intelligence, and integrated support models for full spectrum protection. Tony, are you there? Hi there. Oh, How are you? I'm good. And where are you? You're obviously at the moment in some library or something, but... Oh, yeah. This is my house. This is the, the home library. Where's that? Where, where's the suburb? Uh, Burns Beach. Burns Beach. Lovely. Up, up northern, northern suburbs, northern beaches. Yeah, that's right. So who is Protect Plus developed for? Who's the paying customer? Um, so a lot of our customers are government departments, so large government departments, large enterprises, just anyone that's got a really complex network. We take a lot of events in from all of their systems, analyze them, and then look for threats, cyber attacks, that kind of thing. Have you ever watched yourself pitch before? I've never pitched before, oh. let, alone, let alone watch myself pitch before. Okay. Jumping in the deep end with both feet. Good on you. Absolutely. All right, let's have a look at Tony and uh, Protect Plus. Between 2019 and 2023, cybercrime is expected to cost the global economy 5.2 trillion US dollars. Putting that into perspective, it's greater than the sum of both Australia's and the UK's GDP. So it's no surprise cybersecurity is one of today's top business risks. Organizations must balance investment between people, technology, and intelligence and ensure they work together. Cybersecurity is complex and often requires a highly dedicated and costly solution if you build it yourself, which is where Protect Plus comes in. Kinetic IT knows how to defend against malicious actors. We've been doing it for almost two decades. In 2015, we reassessed the threat environment and realized things needed to change for our customers to remain safe. Built on relationships with government, we established the capability to defend against global threats with a local context. Our knowledge of global security threats is backed by an unrivaled presence in the Australian IT landscape. We've combined highly tuned processes with protective monitoring technology to develop a custom reporting portal to represent cyber situational awareness for three customer engagement levels, engineering, operations, and executives. Protect Plus ingests billions of security events and digital indicators from government agencies each day. Events are fused with open source threat intelligence and correlated against sophisticated attack models to allow us to triage and respond to those incidents. Protect Plus is here for the long haul, supporting the local cybersecurity job market while researching new and innovative ways to combat the scourge of cybercrime. Protect Plus puts Western Australia on the global cybersecurity map, and as such, we believe we are deserving of this prestigious Inside Award. Fantastic. Love that finish. All right. Good. 
Uh, head over now to Mark Powell for uh, his feedback on the pitch tone. The lowest triage and response. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie, and uh, and uh, thanks for the pitch, Tony. Um, uh, probably you, you probably uh, cheated a bit there, Tony. You went you went a fair bit over. Um, so um, I've actually got less questions to ask of yours, but um, I get it that cybercrime is a really big challenge, uh, yeah. and and it is great to see like a local firm and with a respected name. Uh, take that challenge up. I think the fact that um, no problem is too big to solve here is a great message. Mm. Um, and it makes sense, I think, for an IT-focused commercial business to have pursued in a market like this and, and create a product like Protect Plus. Um, it is something that I think, you know, you've got to trust somebody before you're going to take up a product like this. So I think uh, having experience makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, and you play that pretty well in your presentation. Um, Maybe you're a little reluctant to share too many of your secrets. Um, it's hard to tell because I thought it was a little jargony in there, um, but I just probably needed a bit more clarity on, on how this solution was unique in a crowded market. Okay, yeah, I understand. Um, I, the, the thing that we focused on and actually as part of the submission for the Inside Award rather than this um, was the portal that we've developed, which actually allows us to uh, show the information that's being captured by our security operations center at three different levels. So it's that element of technical operations and enterprise um, kind of executive uh, reporting that we've really focused on. And being able to take the operational data and split it up in that way makes it a lot more accessible to people like in the boardroom where a lot of that operational data wouldn't have made sense before. Yeah, and I can see a big business experience shows in the way you can um, telling me that. So, uh, you know, obviously this is a big business product for the beginning. That's okay. right. Thanks, guys. And thanks, Mark. And good luck, Tony. Um, now, what did Tommy Shin think of that? There he is. Big thumbs up from Tommy. Okay. He's nothing but positive, that Tommy. Excellent. Now, we're going to give a warm welcome to Claire Orange from Digi Social. Uh, children's mental health therapist. Claire has seen firsthand the critical issues arising from children's uneducated and unregulated screen time. This has driven development of DigiSocial's intelligent platforms, which provide relevant and immersive digital life education for preteens, their parents and teachers. Claire, are you there? I am, Charlie. Hi. Good to see you again. Now, I've seen you pitch a few times. Um, was it a bit different pitching into your camera phone? Oh, look, I mean, there's not many occasions that you're really grateful for a global pandemic. But this <laughs> was definitely, definitely one of them. Uh, you know, not minimising anyone's awful experiences during this time, including uh, some of our own. But certainly just being able to pitch to a camera has got to be better than standing there in front of uh, a whole bunch of people. Oh, so I, I was grateful. You, you liked it more. I did. I did, indeed. And how long have you been going now? And, and what stage are you at? You're at commercialisation? You're out in schools? What? Right. Um, yes, well, uh, we're, we're a year old. Um, I, uh, I've been doing this for 27 years as a therapist, and certainly the last five years uh, has been very telling in terms of the, the digital health and wellbeing of children. So DigiSocial itself is only one year old. Uh, we're actually supposed to be in our clinical research trial right now, uh, but of course, with the coronavirus, it's all been held up. So we pushed that back a term and we're utilising our time uh, in, in other ways. All right, fantastic. Let's see the pitch from uh, Claire and DigiSocial. Suicide, Australia's leading cause of childhood death with one in four due to cyberbullying. Trolling, sextortion, grooming, pornography, digital age issues, devastating families and costing our economy an estimated $3.3 billion annually. I'm Claire, Digi's founder. DigiSocial is our custom-built social media platform offered as an annual school subscription for preteens. As children play, they learn. AI analyzes their picture and word content and animated tutorials guides their behavior. 
Gamification happens through privilege points called digits, rewarded, lost and spent on platform. Parents and teachers also have access to video-based learning. Our research trial starts in Term 3, then we target the 70,000 Year 5s and 6s in WA, 700,000 nationally and then the millions worldwide. Every child, everywhere, has the right to life-saving digital life education. Well done, Claire and DigiSocial. I saw you cringe a bit, Claire, as it went to. I hope that wasn't too tough watching yourself pitch. <laughs> oh, it's, it's excruciating, isn't it? It's, it's We're going to hear from Kelly from uh, Space Cube, her feedback on the pitch. Thanks, Charlie, and thanks so much, Claire, for that pitch as well. Um, it's fantastic as well, I think, to not just see a, a a company that's got um, the ability to have strong impact on a commercial level, which you really highlighted with your potential market size, but also at a social level, which I think you covered off really well in that and was fantastic to see. Um, obviously, cyberbullying and cyber awareness is something that is on um, the agenda. It's in the media. I think everybody's really aware of it. So it's great to see something that is addressing a clear need. Um, and your passion for the topic was really evident as well. Uh, my feedback is, again, very minimal. Um, once again, it would be lovely to have seen a visual um, of, of the platform or anything like that. Again, it's just so helpful to really quantify so quickly what you're discussing there as well. Um, and I love how you covered off that you're going into your testing um, in the next term, which is really brilliant. So it just, uh, I'm assuming that it's not been commercialized at this stage but um, probably just need to be a little bit clearer on when that commercialization would happen. If it was in there, I just missed it because it, it was a bit quick, but a minute is so hard overall, though I got really excited about um, what you're working on from that minute. So thank you. Great feedback. Well done, Claire. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Kelly. That's lovely feedback. And um, we, we haven't commercialized yet uh, really because we've got children um, our, our precious children on this platform. I really wanted to go through the clinical trial and make sure that we've covered off all the safety and security that we need, that our AI is working uh, effectively to moderate their picture and word content uh, so that we could put it into school. So really we were aiming to commercialise in term three. However, you know, the global situation now means uh, that we're held up. But, you know, th that's just the way it is. And, and this has opened other opportunities for us to really nail things on our platform well. So while it's disappointing and it really was devastating not going to trial this term, uh, we've used it for really uh, nailing the, the elements of the platform that need work. And, and I agree, it's something Something that everybody needs to see and and if I could have squashed it in in the minute I would have done it. Can't get everything into one minute but well done and thanks for that feedback Kelly. Uh, Tommy Shin. A nice smile from Tommy all right good so before we head to our last few pitches let's find out a bit more about Entrepreneurs in Residence which is led by our lead judge Greg Reedy. Entrepreneurs in Residence EIR was established in 2000 as a hub of experienced entrepreneurs in residence with demonstrated expertise to help businesses realize their commercial goals. Uh, Greg Reedy, our lead judge tonight, um, is providing one lucky pitcher with a one hour consultation. And he will be announcing that at the end of the show. So thanks, Greg, for your support and entrepreneurs in residence. All right, we're on the home stretch. Two more to go. Uh, Ian Sloan from Marker, M-A-R-K-R, but pronounced Marker, who is here to pitch us a bespoke content management system and smartphone app with AR capabilities that will allow you to publish virtual information anywhere in the world. Ian, are you there? Yes. Hi, Charlie. This is great. Everyone's there. It's fantastic. Good to see you again. Um, now, Ian, where did this idea come from? And, and uh, I think it's changed a bit since I saw it last pitched. Um, it, it's changed enormously, actually. I, um, we only um, kick-started a year ago after a, a really great meeting between um, the, uh, the one of the other founders and myself, um, taking augmented reality and, and putting it into a signage context. Um, we've uh, we've built the back end, we've built a product, and, and we've now got it live on the App Store and the Play Store as of last month. So we, 
we've literally just gone uh, gone live. Fantastic. And have you seen yourself pitch before? Uh, not in this way. It's very uh, <laughs> disconcerting. Okay. Well, it'll soon be over. Let's have a look at your one-minute pitch for Marker and Ian Sloan. I'm Ian Sloan from Marker Systems. Imagine you're a foreign student or tourist and you've arrived in a new city. You don't know where to go, what to do, and all the signs directing you are in an unfamiliar language. Thankfully, you've downloaded the free Marker app and by holding up your phone, you see virtual signs throughout the city, university, or event. Think of Marker as a complete signage system in your pocket. Councils, universities, museums, and event organizers subscribe to Marker and create and place virtual signs in GPS locations. They can tell a story, promote an event, uncover history, and provide important public information. That city you landed in spends millions of dollars a year on signage and information. Marker delivers, in the language of the user, where it's required at a fraction of the price. Marker is a game-changing way of accessing information without the visual pollution. All right, so virtual uh, advertising in space for people, signage, etc. Over to you, Greg, for your feedback for Ian. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, thanks, Ian. Um, actually, I think that was a really well, clearly articulated, um, you know, statement of what the problem is and how you're, you're looking to solve that. Um, and, and I could see in that sort of sector that people would be looking for a simple, easy onboarding type approach. And I think I do get that. It was great actually listening to you a little bit before Charlie's interviewing, because one of the questions I had was, you know, where are you at in terms of how you're actually getting it to market? And I can now understand you're sort of getting on the app store um, and sort of getting it through. Probably would have been good to actually, again, come up with, um, you know, maybe some examples where it's actually being used and what's that impact it's actually achieved. Um, I think that would have been um, cool. Uh, and I think, um, um, you know, me, the purpose of a pitch is, is, is really, it's a chat to create an opportunity for a further conversation. And so, um, you know, that's why we only have a minute, but you really need 10 hours to explain the whole business. But what's your call to action? What did you want the audience to do as a consequence of listening to that pitch? And, and so that's my feedback, but well done. Yeah, yeah. I, um, so, so our main purpose is to get people excited about the whole logic that they can take control and publish their own information in a, in a GPS location. And um, we've already got um, several customers already started. So City of South oh, Perth cool. started, Perth Festival started. Um, we've got a number of events companies. So they're already uh, on, the, uh, on the subscription path now. So um, we, we've got some great examples now uh, kicking off and, and, and this is our, our springboard into um, growing that. Very good. Thank you. Okay, thanks Greg and thanks Ian. All the best with Marker. And we've now, uh, Tommy Shin would like to just come in and say something or not say anything, but we'll go stars in his eyes. There you go, Ian slow. Very good. Um, final pitch, uh, last but not least, Tom Young from Udru, uh, who was not able to participate in the Pitch Fest last year, but is now with us here to share us with his tech. Now, a lot of us would know Udru, world's first building technology platform that makes designing, planning, and building your own projects faster and more affordable. Tom, are you there? Hello, Charlie. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good to see you. Now, you're not averse to the odd pitch. How is pitching virtually <laughs> I'd beg to differ. Um, I think I'm horrible at pitching, and generally, a one-minute pitch is my idea of a nightmare. So, um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. And where are you with you, Drew, um, at, at the moment? Yeah, um, we're very fortunate at the moment. Um, we're sort of ninety percent business as usual, just without all the um, networking events and sort of face to face meetings, which has affected me actually most out of all the staff, which is awesome because it's given me a bit of time off. And um, yeah, really, it's probably the most relaxed I've been for a couple of years. All We've right. been working very close um, with state governments around Australia and also internationally about a COVID recovery plan for the building industry to help kickstart things and get things um, moving quicker. So it's actually led to a lot of opportunities. and. Um, yeah, we're in some really exciting talks at the moment and uh, really excited to release a few things over the next few weeks, hopefully. Great. All right. Let's see your pitch. 
Hi, I'm Tom. I'm the founder of Udrew. Have you ever planned on undertaking a small building project or an extension at your house? It's timely, it's expensive, it's confusing, it's confusing, and that's even before the build has even started. With the Udrew platform, no matter what your experience, anyone can design, engineer, cost up, and improve your own building project from start to finish in a matter of a few minutes rather than months. Simply sketch out whatever it is you want to build, and our AI technology will automatically calculate all the structural engineering, the surveying, the drafting, all the materials you need, and simultaneously it'll be checking against every local and national regulation in real time. The result takes a couple of minutes from start to finish and you'll end up with fully approved compliant building plans and you can begin building straight away without any costly delays and with a perfect design every time. Australia currently sees about 800,000 of these small building projects per annum. This represents about $500 million per annum opportunity for Udrey in an area that currently the industry doesn't want to touch. We're working really closely with government and industry to make this whole process from start to finish easier, smarter, and up to 70% cheaper in design fees for everyday people who just want to build a small bloody addition at their house. Thanks very much. Okay, Tom, well done. That was you, Drew. And now to Mark Powell for your thoughts on the pitch, please. Oh, thanks, Charlie, and uh, great work, Tom. Uh, I, I do think this is a staggeringly big idea and uh, I always appreciate people who take these things on. Uh, you know, the, the renovation market's huge and then you're arming customers with the data and the tools to estimate costs and, and get past red tape from lots of jurisdictions. Uh, I've done a renovation and I would have no idea what was required in all that because I basically paid other people to do it as you have to. <laughs> so I really appreciate that you're you know, either allowing people like me to do it myself or at least putting some some competition in there. Um, big, big ideas need a bit of refinement in the pitch, though, I think. And, and I, the detail we want, um, I feel like you've been at this for a while. I'm pretty familiar with the idea of you, Drew, and you've won some awards. So I was sort of expected to hear a bit more about how accepted this might be in the market or some examples. Um, and as... Greg says in the previous pitches, what's the call to action? What's next? What do you want people to do? Thanks. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks very much as well for that, Mark. Um, yeah, there's just so much that you have to squeeze into a one minute pitch. And um, especially with Udrew, it's such a broad covering um, area. It's something I always struggle with is what, what bits to highlight. So, um, in regards to actual user cases and what's happening next. Um, we're doing our first international rollout, um, hopefully in a few weeks, we're um, beginning that and hopefully statewide as well. In fact, we're actually meant to have started that on March 27th, but um, yeah, that's when a lot of flight restrictions happened and things like that. So um, in future, I think it would be um, really good to actually yeah, touch on the actual user cases and things. So. We've, got, we've done over a thousand user tests and we've had 100% compliance in every one of those tests so far. So the next step is getting those live, um, you know, uncontrolled tests happening. And we're hoping to start that in about three weeks time. And so the call to action, I'd love for as many people as possible to go to our website, which is just usury.com and um, sign up for some of the beta testing. That would really help us and um, We'd love to get your feedback because it is such a broad covering area. There's, we need those fresh eyes to look at these um, things that we've been working on for so long. So All right. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for your feedback, Mark. Thanks. Well done. 11 pitches. You've done it. And you excruciatingly had to watch yourself pitch. I don't know how you did that. And thanks, judges, for the, that feedback. Um, we've got one final Tommy Shin emoji on Tom's Udru pitch. There you go. Thumbs up from Tommy. And there you had every, have, have it, everyone. Some pitches from the latest tech to come out of WA. Now it's your time, everyone watching, to submit your People's Choice Award winner. This is not TV. This is interactive, and it's 2020. Um, so the poll is now open, and we'll be live for the next few minutes or so. So find that, and then uh, choose the one from the 11 that you either liked. And while you do that, our judges are going to slink off, spend some time deliberating on who's going to take out the title of Best Pitch Inside Awards for 2020. Thank you to the judges. You can just mute yourself and head off to your virtual breakout room to discuss. Now, while you're deciding, there they go, they're disappearing into the distance. 
while you're deciding who will, um, who you think should get the people's choice and wait for the judge decision. If you haven't done so already, get yourself a drink. I know I have one right here. Um, and uh, by my reckoning, I'm looking over the park here uh, where I live. Um, the sun is over the yard arm, it's Friday, and the weekend has officially begun. It's past five o'clock, knocking off time. We're all stuck at home, so why not enjoy yourself? And I did mention we'll have some prizes as well. So we've got two three months professional license for group map coming up, real time online brainstorming tool valued at $300 each. Group map was an inside awards participant way back in 2012. And now we have Jeremy Liu, co founder, is here to briefly talk to us and announce the winners of his group map uh, two awards, I think. So, Jeremy, are you there? I am indeed. How are you, Charlie? Jeremy, oh, you're very professional. You've got a green. I know. I actually had to turn on the uh, turn on the thing too. <laughs> How's it going? How are you doing? How are you coping with the lockdown, working from home, all that sort of stuff? Oh, it's uh, it's not been too bad for us actually. We were already a remote team, so um, for us it hasn't been too bad. It has just been a case of spending a lot more time in the garden and. A few change of working hours for us because a lot of our clients are not in um, Perth. Right. And just so tell us a little bit about Group Map. I, I, I saw it a few years ago, it might have changed. Um, what does Group, for the uninitiated, what does Group Map do? How does it, what problem does it solve? Oh, sure. Okay. So um, essentially, we are used by facilitators, consultants. Um, and educators. Um, we're an online brainstorming tool. So when people are running meetings and workshops, either face-to-face -face on or online, and they just want a way to facilitate discussion, capture ideas in real time, um, we allow them to make better decisions more quickly and more effectively. That's, that's So it's all. a bit like mind mapping, but visually online, uh, Is that right? Is that we're like your, your sticky notes on a white wall, gone digital. So not just mind mapping, um, anything from SWOT analysis and strategy, agile retrospectives. Um, yeah. Um, and so people just use their design. mobile phone, PC, iPad in the room remotely. They can join in and just brainstorm and on strategy or whatever. Right, exactly. Yes, that's it. And how long has it been going? As uh, so a group map started off in 2012, oh. um, we were in the OZAP Awards and uh, it started off at Curtin University when we were trying to get students to be more engaged in their lessons. As you can imagine, right. that's, <laughs> that was one of how it kind of started off the idea. Um, and so we've been growing since then, and we've um, also actually released a second collaboration tool. Especially and what's with, uh, the usage? Sorry. After eight years, how, how big is the company? How much usage? How many countries? Whatever. What, what stage are you at with it? Uh, well, we're, in, we're about 41 countries at the moment. So, um, and with across both our products, we're seeing about 30 to 40 teams sign up a day, um, a paid teams. <laughs> and right. um, yeah, so a lot of it is, it could just be a single facilitator that just runs their own consultancy firm all the way through to say um, Hulu, who are in the US um, and, and UK is uh, the train line, which is their transport authority there. And they, and they use it for their um, agile retrospectives. So Hulu use it in the States, wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so how many users do you have or companies or organizations or people, can you share that? Uh, I just know how many are getting on board every day. I haven't actually, wow. since COVID-19, if you had asked me that like maybe two months ago, <laughs> I would have those ready to go. But um, yeah, right now we haven't so actually, much. I beg your pardon? Say 40 a day are signing up? Um, about 20 to 40 wow. teams. Um, sometimes they just come all at once because, um, yeah, it, it just depends if it's like a, a, like a large organization. they have seen some remarkable sales since COVID-19. Yeah, it's been, um, it's, not, it's not like a happy thing. It's kind of like, a, we're, we're very glad that we've been able to help people out and um, right. work on a couple of cool projects at the same time. And tell us about the work you've been doing with the Harvard University um, on absenteeism. Oh, so they, they, were, um, they were just trying to address this issue. It's the research center there. 
um, Harvard Business Publishing is one of our clients, but they were trying to address student absenteeism across 17 school districts. So they were just using it for root cause analysis and problem solving within their local communities about how to address uh, absenteeism at school. But I suspect that that's a huge challenge, completely redefine the way they work now. Uh, but so they, they've got that as an integrated uh, solution around what they do. Okay. So where do people go? Is it groupmap.com or where do they go to sign up? Uh, groupmap.com. Yes, that's the one. And how many in your team at the moment? At 10. 10. Okay. So thanks, Jeremy, for that. Um, you're going to name please. two winners. Uh, so I am. I think that. we had to randomly go from a list. So the, the two winners, one of them is uh, Telethon Kids. Um, and the other one is Emergination. So I'm not sure if that's all I needed to do. <laughs> Just yeah, a shout out those Davies names. But... Emergination. I know him very well. I play in a blues band with him. I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, and so, yeah. Uh, and telephone they, kids. Right. Yeah. So they're randomly drawn from the people that are watching. Okay, so well done, uh, Justin and Emergination and Telethon Kids. So they've got two three-month professional licenses for group now. Yeah, so they have meetings, workshops, webinars, whatever it is that they need to, to run, and they need, need a tool to augment, like, you know, their Zoom meetings or so forth, then um, they can use that. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Jeremy, for that. Great to see you again. Um, glad to hear things are going well um, and that you don't even know how many uh, clients you have because it's just growing so fast. That's fantastic. Uh, great mm -hmm. WA technology used all around the world. Congratulations to the winners. The Inside Awards events team will be in touch via email so you can claim your prize. Thank you, Jeremy and guys. Check out GroupMap, groupmap.com. A virtual applause for Jeremy. <laughs> um, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, see you again. All right. I hope you've all voted for your favorite pitch by now. I'm going to welcome back our judges. Do we have our judges? We do. I can see them. Excellent. Now we're going to have a bit of a chat. We're going to string this out a little bit more before we announce the winners. Uh, now that I've got the three of them, um, I'm going to talk about an important topic that's been on the minds of many of us since COVID-19 has hit us. So I hope you've got a drink. I think I saw Mark with a drink. Jer Greg, do you have a drink there? Salute. Uh, Callie, very good. Red wine. Some red wine is the popular choice. I hope the rest of you watching. Um, it is uh, sundowner time. The sun is definitely heading down over Jack Adder Lake as I'm looking over woodlands at the moment. The question I have for you guys um, is, will we see more startups and innovators get going during this period. And for the rest of you watching, please use the Q&A button you see on your screen to also ask a question. And we'll see if we slide that in as well. And one question will be uh, chosen, the best, most interesting question, the one that gets the most interesting feedback, whatever, uh, that'll be chosen. And you will win a $200 Amazon gift voucher just by asking a question online. <laughs> So look, we saw the global financial crisis of 2008-9 was a breeding ground for the liftoff of various tech superstar businesses like Airbnb famously came out of the GFC, Uber. Maybe they worked because precisely they gave people a way to find some extra money and perhaps turning their unused assets into cash and people to have cheaper options to move around and maybe stay. So will 2020 spawn innovation and startups? Will this COVID pandemic actually be a positive? Will we see more startups? Will we look back on 2020, perhaps in the future, and say that was the year we saw lots of innovation in WA? Um, I'm going to run quickly past our judges, starting with you, Mark Pownell. Uh, you've probably seen it all in business in the last 20 years. What's your view? Uh, well, Charlie, without wanting to put you know a silver lining on it, I do I do think that uh, I've seen plenty of examples in the past of um, startups, people who have uh, really wanted to do something and and had to make a big decision to to take that time out, um, you know, to get to, to go and make make the career change or whatever to, to invest the time and energy in um, 
in developing their idea. So I think the very fact that we have a bunch of uh, people out there, a lot of people out there who have this enforced hiatus in their normal career, I think will be a catalyst to at least that period, that startup period of people having ideas. And I, I kind of had one example. I was thinking of a couple of guys I knew quite well um, recently in the downturn, they had finished uh, engineering studies and there were no jobs. So they went and started a, a bow tie making business on which they sold online called uh, freelance bow ties, which I, I always thought, you know, people do make the most of tough times, but it's a particular type of person. It's not everybody. I just think there's more of that, right? There's more opportunity right now. And there is also, of course, the, um, the pandemic itself is creating some change out there. And uh, we're, we're doing things differently like this, evening uh, and the way so I do think there'll be people who say hey their chances come for an idea that actually fits what's going to go what's going on now and and how the world might change afterwards great thanks Mark uh Kelly you'd see a lot of startups uh, over your time at, at Space Cube um what do you think we will see coming out of 2020 will we see more will we see less will they be will they all smashed in the head what, what's the situation Thanks, Charlie. Uh, well, hopefully not option three, but um, I do have to say, <laughs> uh, I think it's really dependent on the stage that the business is at as well. A lot of people who were looking to raise funding um, and were going to raise sort of towards the end of last year, beginning of this year, uh, are facing some very specific challenges. There doesn't seem to be so much opportunity for them. So um, those businesses will need to make some decisions around their next steps um, but we're seeing a lot of small businesses and startups making some really bold pivots as well. Um, I think that Mark really highlighted that there is um, opportunity at times for people that uh, challenge the way that we work and live and utilise assets and how we spend our time. And this is one of those. So uh, I think that we will see some successes. We will sadly see some people who really struggle during this time. Um, but, yeah, I think the business stage as well will be a really deciding factor in that. Thanks, Kelly. And, Greg, what, what's your thoughts on uh, this period? Will we see more or less startup slash innovation in the future coming out of this year? Oh, I think for the reasons that um, Mark and Kelly were just talking about, I think we will see some, um, you know, a, a, a surge in, in sort of startups. Um, actually, I'm almost bullish on the fact that we might see... Uh, um, you know, a real growth in sustainable startups. And, and one of the things that I've sort of just been observing myself as we've gone into the sort of lockdown period, people have been so busy in terms of recalibrating how they might deliver something. Um, actually, it's created imagination and all of a sudden they've become agile and they're thinking about new ways. And all of a sudden, I'm actually starting to see people with new ideas. Um, what's really cool about, I think, at, well, it's the paradox of such a sad situation, but um, the, the, the silver lining, as Mark talked about earlier, was that there's a lot of really deep problems out there. And I think deep problems actually create really good opportunities. Um, and so if the clever people will think about and finding what is a deep problem, they'll think about the best way that they can, they can actually solve that deep problem. And when you've got deep problems, then you're likely to get more people interested to participate. And that's what's going to drive capital, Carly, is just that there's a deep problem that needs that needs solving. And, um, and so actually I'm quite bullish on the whole thing, not just in terms of numbers, but I hope actually in terms of sustainable surges. Yeah, now we've got questions piling in and um, I'm just gonna throw these out and uh, judges just jump in if you wanna take one. Um, here's an interesting, this is totally different, but relevant because people are voting for people's choice. What are the criteria for people's choice? I suppose it's up to them. Pitch quality, pitch passion, Pretty hard to judge desirability, feasibility, or viability in a one minute. So, what should people go on? Who wants to? Maybe the lead judge, Greg. I'll throw this to you. What? I, I think for, um, for me, actually, is it, it actually a good thing about a pitch, and particularly a one minute pitch. It's all about um, uh, actually creating intrigue that someone wants to hear more. And I think that's probably the primary thing. Um, I think. Um, you know, even with what I was doing, you know, what was a memorable thing about this? You know, mm. did they actually, did they remember something about it? Does it actually create impact? Um, and, 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 you know, do you understand where you're going to go next? So I think it's those sorts of things in terms of um, mem it's memorable, uh, it's impact. Um, and and it's uh, did they want to find out more? 
yeah, it spoke to the person and they just thought, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, Do you think it needs some, like, what your experience is as well? Like, you know, I, I, some of the pictures I can, I can, you know, relate to more because they're issues that I've got or I understand versus others. So, you know, I, it just seems to me that, I, I, you know, if you're going for a popular vote, you're more likely to tip the one that makes sense to you. Yeah, good point. It is. It's crowdsourcing a winner. <laughs> um, what business category will have the biggest opportunity after the pandemic? Pandemic. <laughs> Notice the floating inverted commas in after because, you know, there's going to be a versions of afters, aren't there? And I, will we ever get back to what we were uh, like before? But um, as we come out of this, do, does anyone, anyone want to jump in on any categories that will do well? Or that you're seeing are doing well? I, I actually think that we're going to do, there's going to be a stronger focus on, um, on, 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 on health, um, just simply because of COVID and so on. And there's some I, I think that's where there's going to be an ongoing suite of deep problems that we need to actually address to, whether that's actually physical health, mental health, um, you know, that sort of coming out of that. So I think as a category, um, and, and also, by the way, I, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, when you start to see some of the relaxation of some of the reimbursement models, telehealth, um, you know, and, and so on, there's probably opportunities that are going to come out of that that haven't been there before. So I think that's actually a category to watch. Yeah. And Charlie, I think people just take up stuff, um, you know, like my parents have used Zoom, you know, they, they would never have used that. I think people have been using things, been getting online delivery when they maybe more or if they've never done, they've gone and they're getting online takeaway food when they've never done it before. I think there's those shifts in patterns. So that that becomes a, a volume game that wasn't quite, it was creeping up, whereas suddenly there's a marked shift. And I have to say, I do wonder if there's opportunities in the industries that have been really smashed. Um, not necessarily for the people already there because they've got to re rebuild, but maybe there's just chances for people to get in where, um, you know, if you're in air travel, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying air travel is going to be a great place to be, but there's got to be some answer to a solution in a field like that, that maybe, uh, you know, no one was really looking at beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. C Callie, are you seeing any pivots among the Space Cube community like they were doing this and now, whoa, they're off doing that. Yeah, I, I definitely think, um, I imagine everybody's very well aware of the pivots people are making towards things like producing hand sanitizer. There's been a lot of gin producers and things like that making those kinds of pivots. Um, I think that it's probably a little bit more around transitioning into that online space so that when we do return or settle into our new normal, mm. um, as I think we're all looking to call it now, there'll actually be more than one revenue stream for that business um, as we start to come out of this as well. So some strong pivots, but I would have to say uh, a lot of really smart ways to diversify revenue streams are coming out of this and people are really reviewing the business model yeah. um, as a result as well. So that if one goes down, here's option B and how can we maximize the opportunities um, to reach as many people as we can instead of possibly being reliant on a, a physical location, which has been really interesting to see. Right. Keep the questions coming. They're flying in at the moment, um, but we are going to have to wrap this up soon. Um, a question for anybody on the, on the panel. Uh, do you think organisations will adopt change more quickly in the future now because of this pandemic has just come in and affected everybody and it's gone bam? Do you think people will just be a little bit more, ah, we're going to adopt, be a bit more keen to adopt change in the future? I'd like to think that they will. Um, I think that we've had a relatively mild uh, response to sort of COVID in Australia versus possibly countries like Italy and the UK. Um, but I think what's really strong about it is, is that it's showing businesses that they can adapt quickly. And that's probably the most important thing um, from my personal experience and from what I've seen through Space Cubed. Um, it's more important to show that you can and then you're more open to it in the future. So fingers crossed we will see more of that. 
Mark, you were sort of nodding your head. Oh, I just, I think, uh, I thought Kelly had kind of covered that with that, you know, like that shift from being a distillery to a hand sanitizer. I think people have really tried things really quickly. We've done it in our business, stuff that we've had sitting there for two or three years. We should do that. We have to do that now. We've done it literally in three weeks. And, you know, yeah, there's, it hasn't been perfect, but I, I do think that, that uh, lots of businesses out there have done have, have been able to or had to make responses and learn that they can make changes really quickly. I do hope that that becomes more normal. Um, it may be that we all settle back into our old ways pretty quickly. Do you think that people might stop offshoring or certainly reduce their offshoring and do more onshoring? Um, yeah. Because it looks like WA will open up maybe Northern Territory, South Australia, eventually the whole of Australia, maybe New Zealand, you know, but international travel will still be limited. Do you think we'll sort of go back to looking at local a bit more? I totally do. I think uh, people are trying to diversify their supply chains and the markets are going to. Um, and I think there's a lot of that. Um, and that, that, and that depends whether you're talking geographically, whether it's just getting it out of one place like China or, or whether we, but I definitely think there's going to be a lot of emphasis on manufacturing locally, having that ability to do stuff where you can. Uh, it's a little bit of back to the future, but uh, you know, I, I think it makes more sense now. I, rec I reckon we'll get a lot of it. And I think there might be a little bit of government incentive to do so. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Interesting. And with us all being used to remote working, um, and being forced to remote. Do you think it's going to change how organisations have their staff arranged? You know, you won't need to come to work. There'll be more remote working, tele teleworking, et cetera, in the future. Or we, I think, the I think that, like we're all going to go back to offices. I think that actually links back to some of the conversations before, I think, in terms of change. I think you'll find that um, change will occur because businesses will have to do it. Um, I, I'm, I'm part of a group and we're looking at, you know, uh, I guess crowdsourcing ideas from community and industry. And one of the big things that we're finding is that what we've really got to do is find big ways to actually build confidence in, in people going back into the, into the workplace, um, going back into restaurants, go back into these sorts of areas because, you know, do we know, and, and Carly, you're right, I think we've been pretty lucky here in WA, um, but nonetheless, I think there's going to be that thing. So I think there will be... Um, um, necessity for change uh, in terms of building confidence to get back into it and we're probably going to have to reimagine some of our workplaces in terms of you know when people come through because some of the stuff we'll have will still last for a period of time um, so yeah I, I, I think it's going to be a really a very very interesting thing and people are going to find it they can still sustain work practices like we're doing now but mm. they'll still need to bring back into the offices how do you actually manage all of that that's going to require change and some decisive decision making and a related question, will office, this is a question straight from the, the listeners, will many office towers end up more like co-working spaces than we had before COVID? That's a Kelly question, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a Kelly I question. Probably, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably should, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, well, co-working the future, Kelly. Look, I think particularly if people do really embrace the opportunity that comes with... Um, both flexible working and as well shifting to an outcomes-based management model. Maybe not so much everybody doesn't need to work per se nine to five, but maybe achieve set outcomes on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, then there is a really great opportunity to embrace more of a co-working or a flex office model because you won't need so much space in the same way that Airbnb and Uber have really shown that we can better utilize assets that are already sitting around us. A flexible office model does the same for commercial real estate. Um, and now, obviously, and I'm very aware that it's a passionate topic that divides people, it doesn't suit every person and it doesn't suit every business, but I do believe it does suit more than are currently using it. And there's a lot of opportunity there for businesses that are looking to reduce overheads um, and maybe add in a slightly more community-based aspect to their working. Okay. Uh, startup funding. Startup funding in Australia is expected to take a hit if it hasn't already. Um, in WA, funding levels are already proportionately low compared to what is funded elsewhere. Is this an opportunity for funding in WA to increase? Mm. Gee, that's a tough question. 
Maybe great. Uh, I, 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 we, we, we sort of thought about that coming from a Perth Angel side of things. Um, um, and it's interesting talking to a lot of our members and, and sort of colleagues that, um, yes, it, there will be a slowdown, and there is because, you know, actually private investors, particularly early stage, are very judicious in what they do anyway. Definitely the more sophisticated ones are. Um, and just in this sort of environment where there's a little bit of uncertainty in terms of how we're going to transition out of lockdown into recovery, into post-recovery and what the new world's going to look like. People are going to spend a little bit of time on that. Um, but uh, I, 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 I'm not sure that we'll see... There, there, there's work to be done to actually grow our capacity in the state in any event. That needs to be done. And we're passionate, we're passionate about doing that. Um, but uh, I, I think it's good help is this clarity of deep problem and deep solutions required, which will give um, compelling and imperative to actually participate in those and get real growth. Um, and so I think it's up to a lot of our ventures and we're talking about and probably people in the audience to, to, to really uh, focus on what's the growth opportunity that they've got and how they can calibrate that. And I think if you can do that, you're probably likely to be more successful in securing funding. Uh, okay. it's, 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 it's a perennial challenge that we have all the time, Charlie. Yes. They're going to be opportunities, so we'll see what happens. Thank you very much for that discussion. That was fascinating. I'm going to draw that to a close. Thank you for the questions, audience, as well. Um, thank you, Greg, Mark, and Kelly, for those insights. I also can't wait to see what tech and innovation is Thanks, born Josh. out of WA from this period. But I, I've got a feeling it's going to be different. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting. We don't know what's going to happen, but uh, it was good to discuss it. For now, let's get back to what we were doing earlier and uh, we've all been waiting for announcement of tonight's winners. So, Mark, you're up. Can I call on you to announce the Best Pitch Award? Thanks, Charlie. Uh, look, first of all, I'd like to say uh, Business News is very proud to support these awards. And uh, <clears throat> we've always had a focus on WA innovators, um, been reporting on startups and R&D and innovation for more than 25 years uh, and, and increasingly growing our data around that. Um, and we've seen many small businesses grow into major ones, um, serving markets well beyond this state. And many of those have been winners in our very own award programs as well. Uh, from a very impressive, and in case, sorry, in the, in the case of this awards, from a very impressive field, uh, the overall winner was not just one of the clearest presentations, but the proposal also zeroed in on solving a problem that's not just a major community issue, but also seems to be getting bigger by the day. Now, uh, before I announce anything, I just should mention that today's best pitch wins a $1,500 advertising package from Business News to promote their product to leaders in businesses and charities, governments, schools, and other not-for-profits in WA, which is our marketplace. So without uh, further delay, I've, uh, I've got the uh, envelope here yeah. <laughs> and the envelope opener. So we'll just uh, pull that wow. out. I'm very impressed. Swing it out. <laughs> and the, uh, the Lateral Insight Awards Virtual Pitch Fest Best Pitch winner is Claire Orange from Digi Social. Well done, Claire. Thank you very much. That's a, that's an incredible honor and privilege, and I'm I'm very grateful. It's actually a very hard landscape to work in as a therapist and as a mum. And there's lots of children out there who need to benefit from this. Many children who aren't with us today, who could be. So. Um, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well done. Well done indeed. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well done, Claire. And thank you, Mark. Uh, it was very difficult. I think uh, very different pitches, 11 very good pitches to choose a winner, but uh, a very worthy winner, Claire Orange uh, from Digi Social. Fantastic. Great work, Claire. All right. Over to Callie for the People's Choice Award. Thank you so much, Charlie. And it has been an absolute landslide in favour of one of our pitches this evening. So, Claire, don't go too far because you've taken oh. home the People's Choice Award as well. Oh. <laughs> and um, we'll be delighted oh. to have you down at Space Cubed for a few months um, as a part of that prize. Congratulations. 
again, uh, just a massive thank you. A thank you to the Lateral Insight Awards team putting this together. It's, I mean, I hate that word pivot. If I have to hear it one more time, I will quite literally vomit. Um, but it, this is an amazing pivot. It's just incredible. And um, and Space Cube, thank you so much. It's so exciting. I'm going to be a big girl and work in the city. I can't wait. I'll even wear <laughs> pants. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Claire's going to wear pants. Excellent. That's uh, $1,500 of advertising from Business News and three months co-working membership of Space Cube. Thanks, Callie, for that. And thanks for everybody. Um, there you go. Um, Greg. Now you're going to give one hour consultation prize and who did you choose, Greg? Um, they were all great, uh, great pitches. Um, uh, actually, when I work with people, I like to work out where I can actually achieve the busy, biggest impact. So I look at where they can make impact. And one of the things that Australia is actually really, really cool is actually in our research. Um, but it's actually one of our biggest challenges in terms of how we actually translate into real world outcomes. Um, so I'd like to do some work within that area and um, you know, the picture I've chosen um, to spend some time with an hour of what can be take what it will take is actually Dior Atherton from uh, for her project on 3D reconstruction of abnormal viscera. Um, so um, I think it's great. I look forward to talking with you. Great. <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. Well done. Well done, Dior. <laughs> well done. Okay. And um, I'm also going to have a one hour with one of the pitches. Uh, and in my work for the federal government, accelerating commercialization, I meet a lot of startups. And I must say, this one I'd not heard of, and I'd really like to know more about, and I'd like to spend a bit of time with. Um, and that was Ryan from uh, Brief to Go. So, uh, not, so Nyan from Nyan Walker from Brief to Go. So, I'd love to spend some time with you and see if I can help you. Um, you've not pitched before. I thought you were tremendous. Obviously love what you do. So I'd love to spend a bit of time with you, see if I can help. Thanks, Charlie, I'll take it. Great. Thanks, Nine. <laughs> I look forward to that. So let's do virtual cheers and raise our glasses for all our 11 pitches. Well done. And uh, for the winners, well done Claire and Claire and Dior and uh, nine and everybody involved that was quite incredible the technology worked brilliant from uh, kiri and paul in the background and sue and uh, also uh, petra uh, there is one more prize to give and that's the 200 dollars amazon gift voucher drum roll i should have had my drums there is an Amazon gift voucher if you don't know what one looks like. Oh. Ashley Aitken. Ashley, are you there? You're there somewhere. But Ashley, you've got a $200 Amazon voucher. So fantastic. Presumably you can use that to buy stuff. You can subscribe. I don't know. But well done. Well done, uh, Ashley. Well done, all the winners. Well done, judges. Thank you. Well done, sponsors. Thank you. That's it. That's been the first ever Lateral Insight Awards virtual pitch night and drinks. Uh, thanks for spending part of your Friday night with us. We really appreciate the time and support for our state's brightest innovators so they can continue doing what they do. Before we head off, I want to share with you some exciting information for the big show the Lateral Insight Awards itself is on Friday, the 24th of July, 2020 at 6 p.m. will be live streamed. There will be uh, live streaming the uh, awards night. There'll be live streaming comedians. There may be even be a band uh, on there. There will be challenges, prizes, panel sessions. There'll be a tech, technology exhibition hall there'll be everything so please put that in your diaries pencil it in lock it in friday 24th of july from 6 p.m that is going to be awesome we're continuing we don't worry about covid we're going to keep going we're going to do it virtually and it's going to be awesome just like tonight i thought hats off to everyone involved tonight there will be more details i suggest you register for the online newsletter if you haven't already 
Um, and uh, I want to thank our judges, Greg Ribby. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, thank you Charlie. Charlie Norman from Space Cube. Thank you, Mark Pownall, my old mate, Mark Pownall from Business News. Fantastic, great job, guys. Thank you, sponsors, Lateral Australia, Business News, and Space Cubed as direct sponsors of tonight's event. Paul King, you did a great job, Paul. This was technically really challenging, and it went off without a hitch. Brilliant job, Media Right, for tonight's amazing broadcast and media operations. NEC, ICT Group, Kinetic IT, Ninja Software, the Office of Digital Government, State of West Australia, MODIS, ACSWA, Curtin University, University of West Australia, Edith Cowan University, ABA Agency, Royal Flying Doctor Services WA. Without sponsors, this doesn't happen. Thank you guys, that has been fantastic. Appreciate the support. Thanks, Professor Lynn Beasley, patron of WAITA, for your support and attendance. Your contribution to help showcase innovation that lives here in WA is much appreciated. Lastly, a big thank you to all our participants. Without you tonight, just wouldn't be possible. Congratulations on taking the time, the effort and the courage to share your innovation with the world. Fantastic job, 11 pitches. If anyone would like to find out more information on each of our pitch entrants, uh, go and connect with them. Visit insightawards.org.au. That's insightawards.org.au. It's the weekend. Good night and have a great technological, innovatory startup weekend and beyond. Thanks everybody. <laughs>